Greetings, boys and girls. Today, we are going to be solving multi-step problems with multiplication. We're going to be using strip diagrams as well as equations, um, and we're going to see a very familiar graphic organizer. Actually, you already see it. Okay, let's get into the first problem. Chris's computer has three hard drives and 64 gigabytes of space each. And, oh, I didn't read it right. Chris's computer has three hard drives with 64 gigabytes of space each. And two hard drives with 16 gigabytes of space each. The files on her computer use 78 gigabytes of space. How much hard drive does how much hard drive space does her computer have left? Now I'm thinking to myself, what is hard drive? Well, look, there's a little picture of it on the side here, and hard drive is where files are stored inside your computer. It's kind of like the computer's memory card, okay? And so, what do we already know? Well, we know that her computer has three hard drives, and each of those three hard drives has 64 gigabytes. Then she has another two hard drives, and each of those two hard drives have 16 gigabytes of space. And then we see that with all those hard drives, she, is, she has some files that are taking up 78 gigabytes of space. Okay? What do we need to find out? Here's our question right here. We need to find out how much hard drive space her computer has left. So let's write that information down right in this box. Okay, I hope you've had an opportunity to write that. Now, the question, uh, the first box was already filled in for us in terms of what we already know. I already filled that in, and you see I just underlined where that information came from. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next section. The next section asks us to summarize the problem or draw the problem or we can even restate it in our own words. So you can see I drew three yellow boxes to represent the three hard drives that each have 64 gigabytes of memory. And then I drew two green boxes to each represent the two uh, hard drives that only have 16 gigabytes on them. Okay? Now, once you combine all that storage space She's using 78 gigabytes for her files. But we're figuring out how much does she have left, which would be this unknown portion. That's what we're trying to figure out. Now I'm ready to fill in, fill out, the next part of my graphic organizer. Now when we clarify, this is when we write down what are we going to have to do to solve the problem. Well, we're going to have to figure out how much space she has in all, right? So I can multiply the 64 times 3. Okay, where is the 64 times 3 from? That is this right here, the three hard drives that each have 64 gigabytes. So I can multiply those times 3 and then add that to 16 times 2, which represents the two uh, hard drives that have 16 gigabytes on them each, that would give me the total. Okay? And I'm going to represent the total with a T, the variable T. Okay? Now, after I figure out the total space she has from all five hard drives, I then need to figure out how much she has left after she used 78 gigabytes. 
So I would simply take the total, which is t, I don't know it just yet, and then I would subtract 78 from that, and that would give me g, which represents how many gigabytes she has left. That's the question that we are answering. Now that box is already filled out for you. Next step is to make a prediction. We're going to estimate what we think our answer is going to be. So when I estimate, I see I have a 64. I'm going to round that 64 to 60. Okay? And then I would be able to um, multiply that. 60 times 3 would be 180. Okay? And then I am looking at 16 times 2. So 16 times 2, I would round 16 to about 20. And then I have 20 times 2, which is 40. From here, I'm going to add 180 plus 40. That would be 220. Okay? Now that's just the first part of my prediction. Now I need to take this 220 and I would subtract 78 from it. I'm trying to do this all in my head. So I'll keep my 220, but I'm now going to turn 78 into about 80. I just rounded that to the nearest 10. Now I'm looking at 220 minus 80, which is like 22 minus 8, which would be 140. So my estimate is that she's going to have about 140 gigabytes left. After I came up with my estimate, now I get to actually solve it. So now I'm going to do my multiplication steps. 64 times 3. I'm going to pause this. I'll let you continue working it out. And I'm going to uh, pause this in case you needed to catch up from the last step. Okay, now I'm ready to finish working this out. So I'd multiply 64 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Carry my 1. 6 times 3 is 18. Plus 1 would be 100, or 19. So now I have 192. That's how much is on the 3 gigabytes, or the 3 hard drives. Then I'd multiply 16 times 2. 6 times 2 would be 12, carry my 1. 1 times 2 would be 2, plus 1 would be 3. Now I'm going to add these two values together. I'll just add it on the side. 192 plus 32. The reason I'm adding it is because I'm figuring out what is my total storage space. So 2 plus 2 is 4, 9 plus 3 is 12, carry my 1. And that would be 224. Now, from the 224, my next step is to subtract out the space that she's already used. So now I'm going to say 224 minus 78. I start on the right. 4 minus 8. I can't do it. I need to go next door. Take 1 from there. Add 10 more to my 4. So now I have 14 minus 8, which is 6. 1 minus 7. Also can't do that. So I go next door, make that 2 a 1, and now my 1 becomes 11. 11 minus 7 is 4. And then I just bring my 1 down. So then I get left with 146 gigabytes. Now what's really exciting is look at how close that was to my estimate. My estimate was 140. My actual answer is 146. So that tells me that my actual answer is very reasonable. So for my solution, I'm going to write this in a complete sentence. She has 146 gigabytes of storage 
left over. Go ahead and write your complete sentence. Some people may not have gotten all of their work, so I'm coming back to this so that you can catch up to this. I will give you about 20 more seconds to get this also down. Alright, well I hope you had a chance to get that problem down, as well as your complete sentence, that she had 146 gigabytes of storage left over. And now we're going to move to problem number two, which is on the back of your sheet. Here's our problem. Carney and Doug bake cookies to sell at a bake sale. Carney makes three batches of 17 cookies each, and Doug makes three batches of 20 cookies each. After 10 minutes at the bake sale, they sold 32 cookies, which is pretty impressive. How many cookies do Carney and Doug have left to sell? So we need to figure out what do we already know. Okay, so we know that Carney made three batches of cookies. We know, uh, and there were 17 in each of those batches. We know that Doug makes three batches of cookies, and he makes more because he had 20 cookies in each of his bas uh, batches. And then we know that within 10 minutes, they sold 32 cookies. Okay, so I'm going to write those three statements down. So you can see here, I just summed up the information uh, that I read about. Carney made three batches of 17 cookies, Doug made three batches of 20 cookies, and they already sold 32 cookies. Let's go ahead and jot that down. Okay, our next step is for us to draw this out, okay? So my drawing is not going to be super amazing, but I'm going to do the three batches that Carney made. And remember, she only did 17 in each batch. And then I'm going to do the three batches that Doug made. And he made 20 in each of his batches. And then they sold some. they sold 32 cookies. But we are trying to figure out how many cookies do Carney and Doug have left to sell. So we're figuring out this amount. We don't know how much, uh, how many they have left to sell. But we know they started with 17 plus 17 plus 17 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20, and then they sold 32 of them. All right, I'm going to give you a moment to get your drawing down. I'm going to flip the screen in 10 seconds. Five seconds, two seconds, and we're moving. Okay, so now, clarify, this is when I, I write down my strategy, okay? What am I actually going to do? Well, I'm going to multiply 17 times 3, I'm going to add that 
to 20 times 3. Okay, that will tell me how many cookies we have in all. Because Carney made se uh, 3 batches of 17. Doug made 3 batches of 20. And then, whatever I get there, I'm then going to subtract it, uh, subtract from it the 32 cookies that they already sold. Okay? And from there, I am going to have my total. Uh, the number of cookies that we still have to sell. Alrighty? Now, in the last problem, I actually made it another step. So watch. I can take that, and instead of putting that in these big brackets that I had them in, I can say that is going to equal t for my total. And then from my total, I'm going to subtract 32 cookies that were already sold, and that would tell me c, the number of cookies that we have left to sell. So there's quite a few steps in this problem. So now I'm going to make an estimate to find my answer. Well, I'm looking at 17 times 3, and I'm going to round that to 20 times 3, and then I'll add that to another 20 times 3. That 20 is already rounded, so this would be 60 plus 60, which equals 120. And then from 120, I'm going to subtract a rounded version of 32, which is about 30. And so 120 minus 30 would equal 90. So I'm estimating that they are going to have about 90 cookies left to sell. Let me pause for 15 seconds so you can write these down. Okay, I'm now going to solve the problem. I'm now going to actually do the steps. I'm going to multiply 17 times 3. 7 times 3 is 21. I carry my 2. two uh, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 would be 5. And then I'm going to multiply 20 times 3. Oh yeah, I know, that's 60. Then I'm going to add... 51 plus 60. I can do it on the side. 1 plus nothing is 1. 5 plus 6 is 111. So now from 111, I am going to subtract 32. Okay, 1 minus 2, can't do that. Need to go next door, get something from there. That becomes 11. 11 minus 2 is 9. Now I have 0 minus 3. Can't do that. Need to go next door. Make this 10. 10 minus 3 would be 7. And then that 1 I had to regroup from had turned into a 0. So now I'd have 79. My final answer would be 79 cookies left over. Now, 79 is really close to 80, and we might be looking at 90, our estimate, and thinking, hmm, that's really far away, but it's really not that far away. <clears throat> it's 11 away. 79 is very close to 80. Um, if I wanted to go back and check my work, I could work backwards, okay, and add 79 plus 32, that would give me 111, and then make sure that 17 times 3 was 51, and 20 times 3 was 60, okay? So we use the prediction just to see if our answer is in a reasonable range. If it was off by, like, 50, that would concern me. But we're off by 11. I think it's reasonable. Make sure you jot that down. I'm giving you 10 more seconds. Five seconds. 
two more seconds. And we're going to the next screen. So our answer was 79, but we want to write this in a complete sentence. So we can say Carney and Doug have 79 more cookies to sell. Hopefully, your handwriting looks much better than mine on an iPad. <clears throat> okay, we're going to move to the next slide. Now, boys and girls, you're going to have a few minutes <clears throat> to work on a couple of problems on your own. You have the same problems that you see on the screen here. I'm just trying to make it a little bigger, and there we go. So... You're going to be looking at Tammy and then Eric. I am asking you to write the question. You see one I've already done for you. I'm asking you to draw a picture. Write a plan. What, what are you going to actually be doing? And then you're going to solve it. Finally, you're filling in the blanks for your answer. You are going to have about 10 minutes to get all of this done. So please make good use of your time. 10 minutes is... Uh, you know, it's a good amount of time to do it, but you don't want to waste time not getting it done. We will go over it at the end. Thank you for your time.